Seven years ago, I had an idea that mobile phones shouldn't just communicate via the cell towers, but they should also communicate directly with one another. And I wanted to build a system which would allow mobile phones to use any opportunity for contact, not just the long contacts that phones would have if you're seated together like this, or in a coffee shop or airport lounge, but also short contacts, as when two persons just pass one another on the street. I also had an idea for an application. I wanted to create an app which, which where people would, would enter a personal signature, some type of a sound bite that, that they feel that they want to broadcast to the world. And the system would then take on the role of broadcasting it. Could be a song that they like, could be a song perhaps that reflects the mood that they're in, or maybe a recited poem, some words of wisdom, or, or a stated motto. I imagine that this app would be very popular. And then I could walk in a city, walk down a street, and I would tune in to the signatures that people have. I could hear the music that they're broadcasting, how it blends together. And as I would cross the city, I could hear that different sections of the city sound different one on one another. Maybe a Monday morning sounds different than Friday night. And when traveling, I could even not only see that I'm in a different crowd, I would also hear that. So in the years that have passed, uh, my students and I have designed this system. We have studied its performance and eventually we have also built it. It's based on smartphones and we use the Wi-Fi radio in the phones to communicate between the mobile phones. This is a low power radio that doesn't reach very far, maybe 10 up to 50 meters is reasonable to expect. We also use the massive memory that you have in phones to store contents. So in order to communicate over longer distances, we simply rely on the movements of the users. They transport the data as they move around. Here's an example. We have two persons approaching one another in the street. When they get close, the radios make a contact and they can exchange data with one another. Since they don't know one another, they're just passing, the contact eventually breaks and the contact is over. If you think about people walking, then uh, with the short range of the radio, maybe such a contact would last a few 10 seconds, maybe up to 100 seconds. That's certainly enough to exchange some MP3 files, maybe a video clip, a web page, and something like that. But it wouldn't by itself be a useful communication service. So in order to, to stitch all these contacts together into a service, we use a concept called publish-subscribe. Contents are published on channels, similar to podcast channels or Twitter feeds. The contents could be of any type and any mixture, so audio, video, web pages, uh, PDFs, whatever you like, everything can be, be published. And then users would select the channels that they would like to subscribe to in order to get contents. So I would subscribe to a channel of Bach, maybe a jazz channel. I would like to receive um, news updates, and, and also information from the public transportation system to get uh, messages about delays in the traffic or, or updates of schedules. So I would enter these subscriptions in the phone, and then the phone would take over the role and get the contents for me. As the phone gets content, it would also share those contents with other phones that, that are looking for the same contents. So here's an example. We assume here that there's a channel where people share pictures of Stockholm. So we have Silla here. She has a picture in her phone of the old town, as you see. Anita is another subscriber who happens to be close to Silla, and her phones establish a contact with Silla's phone, asking for pictures for this particular channel. And of course, Silla's phone can provide a picture to, to, to uh, Anita. Later on, Anita gets close to a, another person, Bo, and gets another picture from, from, from that phone. So now, Anita has received two pictures of Stockholm, but she doesn't know from whom. And Silla and Bo are not aware with whom they have shared their pictures. So this system that we have built is aimed at broadcasting public information. So here's another picture of the full system. We have the mobile users there to the right, who are entering their, their subscriptions. But they, there's no content published yet. The content is published there up on the server in the internet. And it will reach the mobile users via a Wi-Fi access point. So you see two nodes picked up the content, and they are spreading it to other nodes, who in turn spread it to other nodes and so forth. So it's spreading like a virus. 
It works the other way around. So some content generated by the mobile nodes will spread in the same manner, of course, and will eventually also reach a Wi-Fi access point, can then be uploaded to a server and made available to the global internet. Since we now have the system, we are quite curious of exploring what it can be used for. We call the concept of opportunistic communication. So I will show you three examples where I think uh, it could be used. The first one, I, I will have a gamble because I'm trying to, to run a demo here live. It's a communal jukebox. So let me see if the computer is awake. It allows people to share a sound system by playing music from the mobile phones directly through, through the speakers here. So here's an illustration. I add a song here from my phone. And if nothing happens, then you can try with the break. <laughs> So the idea is that, that, that uh, anyone who would be close to this jukebox could simply just suggest music and it will be entered in, into a playlist. Then the, the jukebox would call on the phones in turn so they, the, their music would play through the loudspeakers. We think that a system like this could be fun to have when you're having a party. Now it woke up, I felt it, it trembling, so maybe the music is coming on. Uh, so you could simply allow uh, all your guests to bring music on their phones, and, and uh, then the music in the, in the party is what, what the guests have brought there. Or you could uh, democratize the choice of music in bars and nightclubs, and finally breaking the tyranny of the DJs. So, levity aside, uh, I believe that ICT should be used to help people. This picture is taken after the earthquake in, in Christchurch in New Zealand. The, after a disaster like this, there may not be any functioning network any longer. And still... <laughs> okay, so the, it, it, there was a long, long delay in the system. Uh, so even if, if you have no network, you have to communicate. You have to inform people where they can get fresh water and food, where, where blankets and tents are distributed, you need to warn about areas that have become unsafe because of chemical spills or radiation, as in the case of Fukushima. And of course, you need to, to distribute lists over people missing. Those lists need to be updated by people found and redistributed again. And we believe that, that opportunistic communication among mobile phones can assist in search and rescue operation for, for uh, natural and man-made disasters. So I made a joke about the tyranny of the DJs, but unfortunately that's not the only, or certainly not the worst form of dictatorship in the world. The picture is, is of uh, the protest in Tahrir Square in Cairo uh, last year, a year and a half ago. The, the Egyptian government went as far as to shut down the internet and the mobile networks to restrain their protests. So infrastructure networks can be censored. But the opportunistic communication between mobile devices cannot be shut down by anything else than, than confiscation of all mobile phones. A, a message distributed here would spread very well. You could imagine that, the, the viral spreading here. In order to cover a whole city, you have to organize couriers. You send people off to other communities, seeding the message in those communities where, where it will spread further. So we are now exp like to have suggestions for other uses that, that uh, could, could be for, for this type of communication and for our system in particular. We see two broad categories. The first one is uh, when you don't need a network. You've seen three examples here in my talk. Uh, the jukebox, the sharing of the pictures, and the broadcasting of, of personal sound signatures. The other case is when you need to communicate even though you don't have a network because it, is, it has failed or it's being subjected to censorship or it has not been built yet, as in rural areas or in uh, developing countries. So please welcome, I welcome you to, to uh, this page where we would like to hear your ideas uh, for, for opportunistic communication. 
Ultimately, what we're after is to empower people to communicate whenever there's a need and whenever they want to, even if networks are not available and uh, uh, even if they cannot be afforded. We want to, to allow any opportunity to, to, for opportunistic communication. Thank you very much.